Okay, we're here uh, to see the Megalodon exhibit here. We're in the last few days that before it moves on, so I'm going to show you all what this you know, has to offer and learn a few facts, you know, which is highly distorted through television. So let's give it a look. Okay, here is talks of small facts about the Megalodon here, which you can learn at this exhibit here. Um, you know, it talks about up on the top here that, you know, from 15 million years before dying two, 2 million years ago. So it's right up to the dinosaur. So, so, but there is a touch of bit of interaction between man and Megalodon, which we'll find out. Let's give it a look. Yeah, up here it talks about um, what little interaction humans have with Megalodon. Is that while the species went extinct, bef um, before man, we find um, we find their teeth through fossil outcrops by the ocean, what have you. We find them in archaeology digs. Some of them will even have holes drilled into it to be hung around a um, leather, you know, leather, str leather string or something like that. And here, you know, legends, legends were made involving giant sharks in it, and maybe some of them may be influenced by Megalodon itself. Here are many of the Megalodon teeth. Some have been cut. But you can see some of them do have the holes drilled into it. Others just found as they are. For instance, this one in the middle. This is number seven, modified Megalodon tooth, ground drilled, and planed edge from 2 to 800 AD in Fort Center, Glades Co., Florida. <laughs> so, yeah, this is all the location of all the teeth. So, yeah, humans had some interactions with the teeth when found, just like we find collect shark teeth today. So here we have a globe, and the point about this is that we find Megalodon all over the world. Each one of these teeth marks you know, found in various locations, California, Maryland, Florida, what have you. And we find them in Cuba, Chile, Argentina, France, Belgium, Japan, and New Caledonia. And the point of this exhibit is that you press a button here and it lights up. Let's see, this is France. You see a little bit of light in France out there. That's how that one works. So, just to show you the wide range that all these shark's teeth have been in. And this little tapestry here is just to give you a size comparison of modern sharks, of course. Like um, this one right here, that's a nurse shark. That is the short fin Mako shark. Built to scale, of course. This was about 12 and a half feet. Nurse shark, nine feet, and you know, in length. Well, it doesn't quite look good. But this one's drawn pretty much a little bit taller than me. But that's probably it's a, I guess to say maximum length. That's probably demonstrating the average length. And you got the great hammerhead shark, about 20 feet, and the, great, the famous great white, about 22.3 feet. And wow. Of course, the Megalodon reaches up to about 60 feet. So, that's just a comparison to modern sharks. And this little display talks about when, when Megalodon lived, and it's between two periods in the Cenozoic, which is the Miocene, 24.5 to 5 million years ago, and the Pliocene, 5 to 8, 1.8 million years ago. And it talks about um, uh, Megalodons have existed from uh, 17 to 2 million years ago. And more, the water was a bit warmer then, so they were able to um, be much more widespread. So that's how you find them all over the world. Um, the dating game, how scientists know when Megalodon lived. Look, they use a lot of relative dating and numerical dating, which is radioactive decay. And a little size them up there is Megalodon's front dorsal fin was about five feet tall. That's pretty impressive. And this one's just kind of showing, um, you know, from a time scale between 500 million years to today. So we see fish from 500 million years from, you know, 
let's see, that's, they dominated the Devonian, so, but they came as early as uh, Silurian. Sharks came by a little bit, you know, about after 450 million years, you know, ago. It also talks about other types of animals at the time. The Megalodon, right here. So, dinosaurs, the non-feathered dinosaurs, they died 65 million years ago. Megalodon, you know, somewhere, you know, right in front of this small little gap right here. So, millions of years, but relatively short and a long period of things. Let's see. And this is a display of, the, you know, these fossils represent a few of the marine animals that lived with Megalodon 17 to 2 million years ago. So, for instance, you got a mako shark here, you know, tiger shark number two, sand tiger, you know, it's a sand tiger shark. But, uh, that's a great white right down here. And right there is a megalodon. So you see the size of the person. Right now, the current, the biggest shark right now is the great white. Fearsome as it is, megalodon was a bit bigger, of course. Now this one right here, that is number seven. That's a baleen whale vertebrae. This lived at the time of the, um, of Megalodon. And of course, it's still alive today. It's a skull of a monk seal. That's a nine. Um, okay, that one right there, number nine, that's a, that's a extinct earless seal. And we have an extinct tooth whale right here. That's that vertebrae in the middle. Eleven, that's a baleen whale. Auditory bulla. Oh, sorry. And number 12 there, that's a distinct tooth whale right there. And then we got a... And that is a rear shell piece of a sea turtle. All these right here lived at the time of Megalodon. So. Why should we like to see him against dinosaurs? This one did not live at that time. This right here is kind of a rough um, frame model showing you the, how big a megalodon is. It's pretty massive. You could swallow a small car if necessary. About 60 feet. It's actually touching the ceiling here. I think it says the dorsal fin. But you can go into it, you know. There's its mouth. I should probably go through there. Of course. This one's kind of tell you about the size of the shark. You know, how can you tell it was 60 feet long when all you got is teeth? Sharks are cartilages. But, you know, they're have the skeletons of cartilage. The only thing that preserves is the teeth. How do you do that? Well, this explains. The scientists had debated this for years. They took, um, they, they look to living sharks for clues since we all, since we have a megalodon as teeth and vertebral, and vertebral, vertebral central. I'm sorry about that. It's not just teeth. A uh, great white shark is a large living shark with, um, teeth similar to Megadon, so scientists use it to estimate the body size based on tooth size. This is the best we could do, just, you know, just using teeth, but we know that tooth variation makes this debatable. So, so there you got, a, let's see, you got this little thing right here. I don't know what it's like, to be honest, but let's see. Uh, what size shark uh, had teeth this big? Uh, let's see, measure the tooth, um, tooth width at the base, so you, Okay, you measure this here, and move this bar, and you move this bar um, to the to um, tooth width of, with a ruler. So, okay. So let's say uh, this right here is just two inches. So we just move this over here to the two-inch mark. Uh -huh. So here you got it down to two inches. So the length and body length in feet, a little over 20 feet. So you got that. And that's how this little display works. Of course, Megalodon being five inches. So, it's a five inch, over five inches, so, so about right here. And that reaches around 60 feet close to that, give or take some variations. All right, so basically it's a guesstimate based on what we can, 
I understand what sharks say. How can we have so many megadon's teeth? Um, we have we have to oversimplify. We use the great white sharks ratio one to one twenty seven uh, of toothpaste width to body length. This means that tooth width is one one twenty seven of the total body length. Assuming that the ratio can be used for uh, assuming that the ratio can be used megadon, the tooth is width of five and a half inches, fourteen centimeters, based on the um, base. Um, it has a base would yield a body length of 58.2 feet. And there's a simple math mathematician of uh, five and a half inches times 127, and divided by 12 inches per foot, you have 58.2 feet. And it probably reaches about you know, an estimate of seven, uh, 77 tons. And over here, um, central dilemma. <laughs> it's a vertebral column. And extinct, and this is, and that's not, that's not a megalodon. It's a stink salmon shark. Shark, the uh, shark centra, which are vertebral disc, uh, reveal um, information about shark species, um, but are generally similar in shape and can be um, difficult to identify. However, there are variations. Note the differences in the surface sculpture between the great white shark centra and uh, to the left. So let's take a look. Um, this is a great white shark centra. And let's see. So you can see the, um, the structure of it is a tad different here. Let's say for this, these are slightly larger. These things like this, you gotta go in much detail. And over there is a tiger shark, and it's the central column with a Goliath grouper. And uh, this is bony fish versus shark centra. So this is a huge mixture of the central column. So, yeah. Pretty massive. Yeah, this little display talks about how they can try to estimate how old a shark is in a similar way to using tree rings to tell how old a tree is. Uh, and this sort of works by you reach over here to a little gap and you just turn to the magnifiers. So, unfortunately, the reflection is kind of bad. But you got two magnifiers and you can try and see, you get close up, you can see the rings. Here's a big one right here. And by counting the rings, you might be able to estimate how old it is. So you have a number of different vertebrae right here. So of course, what did Megalodon eat? Well, anything it wanted. You know, because of their top predator, they're not going to spend their time searching for small prey unless just say, you know, whatever happens in its mouth. Most of are going to attack for large stuff. You know, whales, other sharks, or big fish, just to maintain its body weight. But here's a fun little game. Uh, how much did Megalodon eat in one day? Um, you know, these tuna cans can um, represent the large Megalodon's average food take one day. Based on the size, scientists estimate the Megalodon would have to eat about 2,500 pounds or 1,136 kilograms of food a day. So how many cans of tuna would Megadon have to eat one day? You know, each can of tuna is six ounces. That weight, we can go with the answer. And um, let's see, this is just a simple conversion episode of, you know, six ounces, then convert the ounces to, um, to pounds, or what have you. So you flip, you know, if you do that, I did this once, it's, you know, then you calculate how many cans, almost 6,666 cans of tuna, 16 ounces um, divided by six, because in one pound is 16 ounces, and you multiply it by, you know, multiply by 2,500. Well, do you want a visual representation of that? Well, sure. All this right here. This is t over 2,000 pounds of tuna that would have to sustain a megalodon every day. <laughs> so there you go. 
And of course, this one, you know, you got your fact and fiction section here. People often confuse Megadon's place in time. Um, yeah, you know, maybe you want to put it with the dinosaurs, you have the big top predators against each other. No, they were separated. Um, you know, six, five million years ago is when the last non-avian dinosaur died out. Megadon existed from 17 to 2 million years ago. Of course, the famous, you know, T-Rex, humans, you know, didn't live at a time. Um, of course, Megalodon did not hunt humans, you know, because of, you know, they're separated by at least two million years. And, you know, did humans cause extinction of Megalodon? No. Yeah, they contributed to a good climate change at the time. And of course, this is a display of reproduced jaws. Jaws and sharks don't preserve very well because they're cartilage again. But these displays are made with reproduced and actual Megalodon teeth. And this is the idea, you know, the smallest one here is about, if it was 30 feet long, that's the size of its mouth. And, of course, at the, to 60 feet, it reaches this size. Well, you know, when I showed earlier the, um, the aging process, it's still debatable about, there's no real hard way to judge just straight on the teeth how old they are. But they're trying, so they have to explore certain areas. Does this mean we can't learn anything about them? Uh, yeah, wow. Sharks. Yeah, I'm glad these went extinct. <laughs> the ones we got are bad enough. Of course, this one talks about the Megadon extinction, usually about variously two main factors, sort of um, um, mostly climate change, which is affecting the water temperature and, the, and therefore the ecology of the entire area, along with some areas of continental drift. India smashed into the continent, so creating the Himalayas, North and South America, uh, due to lowering sea levels um, now together, so they can't, so that decreases the amount of overall space in the ocean, and, do, and that hence will affect the ecology in short. So, I'm just get a short end of that. And of course, what does the cooling water have to do with that? Well, you got colder waters, therefore you probably will have extended um, ice caps forming. Bear in mind, this is um, the um, Pliocene. Um, and eventually you're going to get to the Pleistocene, the famous Ice Age. So now you got all the extended ice caps coming up here. That lowers the um, water levels of the oceans. That decreases the space, creates more landmass connections, and that affects the entire ecology of everything. So maybe I don't want to extinct because of such factors. So. This little display, is, these are cast of megalodon teeth that was, these, these were from the real fossils, but they're from the most complete set of megalodon teeth ever found. And they were collected in Polk County, Florida in 1987. And 98 teeth were um, found, including almost all front row teeth and many teeth from, um, from rear rows. Um, so this amazing find is represented here uh, by cast made from real fossils. The length of the megalodon was about 35 feet, based on, you know, and all this and what little we can do here and of course uh, we call these megalodon but bear in mind megalodon is a genus epitaph you know how you have you know basically calling it megalodon is like calling us humans sapiens as in homo sapiens but the actual ones is come concarocles megalodon that's the actual species name it's a combination of greek words concaro which is sharp and pointy or jagged and class which is famous and megalodon, many very figured out, is, is large tooth. You know. So it's a famous sharp, famous large sharp tooth. Um, um, it, um, oh, sorry about that. So it's a famous sharp, you know, sharp large tooth. That's basically what it says. So we call it megalodon for sure. It's a common name, but it's not its official name. It's just um, it's Cocorocles megalodon. So despite the fact that Megalodon's been extinct for around 2 million years, we're fascinated by it because, well, we've always been fascinated by sharks, 
But in here we have access to a shark, well, we have only access to a shark through fossil records. So like dinosaurs, there's that sort of distance that gives us sort of mysterious, um, draws the imagination. But it's it's been, been around, I mean, um, for instance, this one right here is a copy of the painting by the famous Charles R. Knight in around, I think, 1919, was it? Yeah, 1919, yeah. And so we've known about Car um, Caracoles Megalodon for quite a while. Now, granted, when I look at this picture, I really don't picture the size, not like other displays here. But because we're fascinated at that, we are, um, of course, in popular culture, for the last, especially over the last 20 years or so, um, we've always been fascinated by sharks, and, we, and Megalodon being the biggest, we got to put in everything. Um, you know, these are um, these are books, and of course, many of you already figures the Meg by Steve Alton, which you know this, this is the book cover. Of course, they, you know about the movie. And you got another film. You know, before the Meg, you know we got you know have the um, other films, low, many low budget directed video sort of things. These are postage stamps from New Caledonia. But it even talks about um, which games feature about this seat. And of course, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, of course you see, you know, the Megalodon in that. But it's also featured in Shark Hunting, The Great White, Ocean Hunter Arcade Game, and the Dungeons and Dragons Family Role, Role Playing Game. And you got books for kids and such. Even wearable stuff. Leather jacket with some shark fins attached. Helmet to go with it. <laughs> but also in forms of jewelry and decorations. You got a painted megalodon here, number six. Uh, oh, that's a concrete megalodon tooth from American flag emblem, so it's a reproduction. Uh, this one right here, glass uh, megalodon tooth. Because I'm probably going to mold of that. And what do we have here, 11 and 12? And the Megalodon tooth necklaces. And we'll see, this one right here, that's a, Meg that's a Megalodon tooth necklace, and that's a surfer necklace from Hawaii. Of course, over here is ready, let's see, and the eight, 8, 9, and 10. These are ornamented Megalodon teeth. Let's see, this one right here, number 8. It's got some silver, um, it's got some amethyst, blue topaz, cubic zirconium. One number nine here, um, ornamented Megalodon twos uh, with silver, cultured pearl, cubic zirconium, and enamel. So you can see the pearl right on that top there. This one right here, uh, let's see, silver, ruby, and enamel. So yes, they, we've always fascinated with things that are very large, but inaccessible to us. Here we show that off through our, you know, through various means. Of course, um, you could ask why do we care about Megalodon from a scientific perspective? Well, this display shows that um, it tells, Megalodon can tell us about the relationship between other sharks and also going to teach you about shark conservation because, um, yeah, they're not alive today, but it'd be surprised how even things like um, continental drift and um, climate change would even devastate even whole species and affect the whole ecology because of it because they're top predators. We don't treat mother sharks too great either. You know, we see we make food, pollution, overfishing, what have you. So it's good to try and find balance things out. So, well, that should. So that's the Megadon exhibit right here. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching and try to have a nice day. Thank you.